With the 2022 midterms looming, 28 House Democrats have announced that they will not seek re-election and will instead retire or launch campaigns for other elected offices. Of those 28 Democrats, seven are members of the Congressional Black Caucus who are expected to have their seats filled by younger, black, and potentially progressive candidates. Just this week, Florida lawyer, healthcare executive, and progressive Representative Sheila uh, Sherfalis McCormick was sworn in to fill the seat of the late Representative Al C. Hastings. Hastings was 42 years her senior at the time of his death. Nearly half of the Congressional Black Caucus members are 65 or older, meaning that a youth movement within the caucus is inevitable. But the kind of Democrat who becomes the majority of the CBC will shape its future and potentially the future of the Democratic Party. While the most recent wave of Black House members have been progressives, the more tenured Democrats have been grooming and fighting for younger, moderate candidates. Case in point, establishment Democrats in the caucus worked against progressive candidate Nina Turner and in favor of the moderate candidate Chantel Brown in the special election of Ohio's 11th Congressional District. The move drew a, draw, drew a line in the sand between the old guard and the progressive movement within the CBC. Joining us to discuss is CQ Roll Call columnist and host of Equal Time with Mary Curtis, Mary Curtis. So, Mary, what do you make of, you know, the, the, this transition, if there becomes a transition? The CBC, if you take all their ages and put them together, is appreciably older than the rest of Congress, right? So this is, this is an older group of Congress people. Eventually, there has to be some turnover. We are seeing some progressives enter into the CBC. Do you think that that change will you kind of accelerate? I do. I think a lot of energy is on that particular side. And you've seen folks like Cori Bush and, um, uh, uh, you know, Jamal Bowman, who was arrested you know, uh, in the voting rights protest, really bring energy to it. So I think you will see that some of this is natural. And I think part of it is because we see that with with black African American voters being such a base for the uh, Democratic Party that their power in the party is increasing. So it's not like the original Congressional Black Caucus when you were trying to get your voices heard, and in some cases it's the minority voices voters or or uh, voices dissenting. Now you have quite a lot of power there, and you have that diversity of voices still. You you have folks like Lauren Underwood winning in districts that have uh, a really good portion of white voters. And so you have, uh, I think, so many different issues that are going to come to the fore because of it, like police reform and student debt cancellation. It's pretty interesting, all that energy coming from these younger progressive candidates. Why do you think that, at least within the CBC, that the progressives are always young? I, I ask that because in the larger population, the progressives are Bernie Sanders, who's very, you know, old. He's as old as the president now. And, you know, Elizabeth Warren, who's an older woman. So on, in the larger population, it's not just about young people. This is an ideology that stretches throughout the entire population. But is, are there similarly politicians who might rise through this, be progressive, but also not be young people? Yes, I think so, because some of it, so much of it depends upon the constituency that you're representing. So if you're running from a place in California or New York, I mean, look, Barbara Lee, <laughs> Representative Barbara Lee, who's older, pretty progressive, and her vote has always really reflected that. Where folks from other part of the country that are more the Blue Dog Coalition, they've been different. And then you've seen some folks come together. You saw Majority Whip Clyburn, uh, you know, with Montaire Jones, one of the younger, more progressive uh, uh, Congress folks, get together to try to come together with a carve out for the filibuster for voting rights. So you'll see some alliances. So it doesn't really strictly cleave toward age, I would say. And Karen Bass, of course, too, who's retiring from there, but to run for office, to run for, uh, you know, the mayor of Los Angeles. So you'll see all kinds of different alliances, I believe. So we, ha we have an interesting thing that's happening in our cities now. 
uh, many large cities that had large black populations in North and West are losing population. Some southern cities are gaining population. But even in the South, some of those urban centers are losing black people to the suburbs, like in Atlanta. A lot of black people moving to the Atlanta region, just not necessarily into the city limits of Atlanta proper. Uh, many of these congressional districts are r right on top of the city limits of many of these major cities. Will that change the kind of people that, that black people who will be going to, to, to Congress? Well, yes, I mean, you have seen actually a lot of the exciting movement in so many African Americans getting elected. Uh, you saw when Lucy McBath was elected uh, uh, in Georgia that are coming from these suburban areas that are increasingly becoming a lot more integrated. And you see, uh, you know, not just the mayors in these southern cities, but uh, who are African American, many of them very progressive, but you do see some of these suburbs there are contesting for voters in states, particularly in the South. And, uh, you know, in Louisiana, which uh, I believe has a Democratic governor uh, who is white, but you do see some more progressive folks running in these different areas. Now, you will have to see if they will, particularly with all this redistricting and they're carving out. Uh, voting districts that are specifically Democratic or Republican, if they will be able to move some of those voters. Yeah, we can only hope that Lucy McBath has a, a, a good shot because they have changed her district quite a bit. Uh, so we'll see oh, what yes, happens with have. that race. We'll be watching a lot. Yes, exactly. We'll be watching a lot of these races. We'll probably be bringing them to you live on the night of the election. Anyway, Mary C. Curtis, thank you so much for sticking around tonight. I know it was a long show for you. 